this beautiful golden hour light. Have you heard photographers say that it's the best light? I bet you have. And then that harsh light, closer to the midday hours, I bet you've heard that that's bad light. Well, today I'm actually above this beautiful waterfall and I'm gonna tell you something that will just open up so many creative opportunities. You might be a little reluctant to receive this information at first, but contrary to popular belief, there is no good and no bad light. At least not in travel and documentary photography. I mean, I do get it. I once believed that the only light worth shooting in was the light during sunrises and sunsets. Throughout those harshly lit midday hours, I'd usually only shoot indoors. Seeking situations with the light coming through a window or an opening, creating that sculpting chiaroscuro, light dark effect, also considered good. Before we continue, let me just ask you, why do you make photos? Because this idea of good and bad light, the golden hour light being good, comes from having a purpose of creating beautiful photos with a nice warm golden glow, an almost kind of romanticized depiction of the world. If you only want to create those kinds of images, then forget everything that I just said and continue shooting only or mostly in the golden light. But isn't that so incredibly one-dimensional? What if you want more out of photography? What if you want to make images that convey a sense of story, mood, atmosphere? What if you sometimes want to document the harsh realities of the world? Well, then different kinds of light will serve your purposes. Rather than just say, oh, this is great light or this light is no good, I suggest looking at light as a tool and then mentally separating it into different types. There's the golden light, which bathes the subject in a warm, radiant glow, pretty much makes everything beautiful, and like I said, kind of romanticizes things. There are also times though when this light introduces dark shadows, adding depth and a sense of drama. Then there's twilight. At certain stages, it's referred to as the blue hour. It's often associated with a sense of mystery and mystique. When the clouds in the sky light up like this, an image can look very dynamic and it can exude a strong energy. The soft light in the shade of a building, for example, this light in itself isn't really evocative emotionally, but it is really good for showing details. During overcast or rainy days, the light is soft too, but in the right context, it can be evocative of a melancholic and even a somber mood. Of course, we also have that harsh light closer to the midday hours. And it's not pretty, but it's so good for emphasizing harsh, maybe hot environments. And another thing it's good for, accentuating textures. So it can accentuate all the imperfections on a face, which is why some photographers refer to it as bad light. But it's bad only if you want to make a person look beautiful. Now, this idea of different types of light is of course a construct, but can you see how incredibly practical and useful it can be? What are some of the other commonly occurring types of light? Light in the fog. It's even softer than light on overcast days. And sometimes the fog will envelop much of the scene and you get a very strong sense of atmosphere. And because much of the scene can disappear into the fog, there's even a sense of mystery. If you have fog combined with the golden light, there's a chance for some magic and some awe-inspiring, beautiful images, especially in nature. And what if it's foggy during twilight? Then you can get an even stronger sense of mystery and mystique. Now, for travel photographers, for street photographers, for those of us who document moments of real life, we generally have absolutely zero control over the light that we shoot in. However, we can control what we shoot. Why is this important? Well, you've already heard me describing certain feelings that light can evoke, and these feelings, the mood, the atmosphere, they can be enhanced by shooting certain scenes and subjects. The scenes and the subjects that I've selected to show you demonstrate this very well. They work in the kinds of light that I shot them in. And let me just explain this in a bit more depth. Let's say it's a foggy day. In this case, I will avoid subjects with a lot of complex details. The complexity will be lost in the fog. Instead, I'll try to capture minimalist scenarios, scenes that benefit from the atmosphere that the fog creates. If there's potential to somehow emphasize the moisture of the mist or that sense of mystery, 
even better. Now, along the same lines, I won't photograph a landscape and expect it to look all vivid and lively on an overcast, cloudy day. I'll search for a scene that's more like this, kinda melancholic and poetic in its own way, if I'm photographing life. A photo can be more powerful if what's within the frame doesn't contradict the feel that's being created by the light. And look, if I'm shooting a photo story, then I'll still shoot everything, but if I am to choose one or a limited amount of images to represent the day, well, let me show you. While going out with these fishermen and photographing them, we had some light-hearted moments. But an image like this, it just works much better visually. The clouds in the sky, the gray, cool tones, there's an air of something serious here. And so then this expression, the man gasping for air, this complements the mood created by the light much better than a smiling face or a more light-hearted image would. Sometimes in similar situations, I look for ways to emphasize the weather. I'll make sure to capture dark clouds, the puddles, the raindrops. I'll shoot a subject from further with a longer lens to emphasize the thickness of the fog. This all makes perfect sense if you want your images to be loaded with meaning and with feelings. And the same applies to any kind of light. I'll search for scenes or subjects that'll help me leverage the kind of light that I've been given by nature. And because over time I've become familiar with the effect of different kinds of light, I already have many ideas in mind. I know what will work in pretty much any situation. If you're interested in this idea of leveraging light to communicate visually, then there's much more to explore in my newest course. It's all about mastering visual communication. How do you convey a sense of atmosphere, mood, place? How do you create a sense of story? If you are interested in these things, then definitely check it out. Now, of course, things don't end with only the kinds of light that I've mentioned in this video so far. In addition to natural light, outdoors will have completely different effects from light penetrating indoors. There's the already mentioned sculpting chiaroscuro or light dark effect. You can also backlight your subjects by having them between you and the light source. And so the way we position ourselves in relation to the light and the subject can play a huge role in certain types of lighting scenarios, indoors and actually outdoors too. There are also situations like these, with the light coming through fairly narrow openings and interacting with elements like smoke, vapor, or dust. Looks pretty special, right? And if we're talking about photographing life, the world, we can't not mention fire. It's warm and very evocative, and it can make a scene feel cozy, or in some cases, very dynamic and full of energy. There are also different kinds of artificial light that just happen to be there. Street lamps, light bulbs, your subject might be carrying a flashlight, there will be combinations of the different kinds of light that I've shown you, and then things can get really interesting and atmospheric. Sometimes your attention will be captured by the fact that the light is so unusual. If a lighting scenario grabs you like that, if you feel something from it, photograph it. Creatively, it's really important to follow this feeling. No need to be too critical and too selective. Experiment, find something to shoot, anything. As you can see from these photos, I do this all the time. When you make these images, you're training your eye. You're feeding your mental database with all kinds of situations. When you will have a combination of an unusual lighting scenario and a fascinating subject, you'll be able to make the most of the situation. And also you will be surprised at how a striking, unusual lighting scenario alone can make a photo. So do you still only want to photograph in good light? I hope it's become pretty clear why in the beginning of this video I said that there's no good or bad light. If you want a more tangible reference to natural light, you can actually download my free digital book on natural light. Join the photographic process for free and it's just one of the PDF books that you'll receive. The link is in the description. If you're interested in exploring the idea of visual communication, leveraging light, creating the sense of atmosphere and mood, then check out my course link below or this video. It'll help you master visual communication. There's a lot of valuable information in there. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. See ya.